Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first of three webinars organized by the Norwegian Embassy in Greece and isalos.net. The subject today is lessons learned from electrification of Norwegian vessels. And the webinar is sponsored by Erma First, the very successful Greek water ballast treatment uh, equipment maker. Uh, I'm going to introduce our speakers tonight. We have with us Mr. Stamatis Burbulis, General Manager of Euronav Ship Management Elas Limited. Euronav uh, is an operator of uh, 73 crude carriers of different sizes, very big, ULCC, VLCC and Suez Max size. Also, we have Mr. Dimitrios Heliotis, Technical Director and Chief Operating Officer of Target Group. They operate nine ta tankers and ten bulk carriers. We have Mr. Miron Vergis, uh, Director of Electrical and Electronic Department of Attica Group. Of course, Attica Group is the largest Greek ferry operator. Um, and uh, the group includes Blue Star Ferries, Superfast and Hellenic Seaways. Uh, on the Norwegian uh, side, on the Norwegian front, we have Mr. Uh, Sigvald Breivik, Technical Director of Norled. Norled is the largest uh, ferry operator in Norway. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Narver Moos, Director for Battery and Projects of DNV GL. And Mr. Ode Moen, Head of Strategy and Business Development Offshore and Marine Center, Siemens Energy AS. And of course, we are very honored to have with us His Excellency, the Ambassador of Norway to Greece and Cyprus, Mr. Frode Overland Andersen, who will give us uh, his welcoming address uh, right now. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, please. Thank you, Mrs. Sakhir Alice, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Norwegian Embassy, I'm both privileged and honored to open this webinar on lessons learned from electrification on Norwegian vessels. Let me start off by thanking our two partners, Isalosnet and Naftiga Kronika, and of course, the distinguished panelists from Greece and Norway, who will share the insight with us. I'm also very happy to have such a large turnout from both Greeks, uh, Greek and Norwegian shipping industry with us online tonight. Green shipping will become a major international market with significant opportunities for future growth and employment. Shipping companies, financial institutions and suppliers are now planning future ship deliveries in the form of low or zero emission vessels. The Norwegian maritime industry is leading the way in this development of green shipping. Norwegian ferries were among the first to be electrified. In 2015, we had the first. Now, almost 130 ferry routes in Norway is run by electric ferries. And more is to come. Green economy has not only become profitable, this segment of the global economy is one of the strongest growth rates and the brightest future. The new climate economy is about to become a major driver of the modern global economy. Two points for Greece. Uh, Greece has an incredibly rapid development of uh, renewable energy and, reach will, and will reach about 65% renewable energy in electric, electric production within in a few years and latest by 2030. Second, uh, the EU, EU recovery fund uh, will transfer 32 billion euro into the Greek economy uh, along four lines. One of the major of those lines is green economy. And here lies the possibility and challenges for Greece as a world leader in maritime sector. And here on lies also the possibility for the Greek-Norwegian cooperation, I think. Through a series of seminars, we will try to uh, look into uh, how we can foster a stronger connectivity between Norwegian and Greek shipping companies and maritime enterprises in order to develop green ideas for the future. I think it was Mr. Bisias from Naftika Kronika who dubbed today's meeting a meeting between the Argonauts and the Vikings, very aptly. Let us hope that, of course, we invited the friendly version of the two, uh, the two groups our two ancestors mentioned. 
If the Viking and Argonauts would join forces, surely they would be unbeatable. With those words, I bid you all welcome for tonight's seminar, and I turn the floor back to the moderator, Mr. Panos, Panos Sagriades. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And um, we don't have, we have many interesting questions and things to hear. We don't have uh, too much time because we have to finish exactly by 8.10 because of the Greek lockdown regulations. So I'm not going to waste uh, any more time and I'm going to go forth with the first question for our panel. And it's primarily addressed to our uh, uh, Norwegian uh, guests. So the question is, Norway is a pioneer in use of ship ele electrification, starting with smaller coastal vessels. Please describe your experience so far. What type of vessels and how many are electrified right now? Lessons learned, any unexpected issues, uh, pros and cons. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll start with uh, Mr. Breivik, who is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, to, to discuss this question from the operator point of view. Mr. Breivik. I, I, I'm not sure, at least I can hear Mr. Breivik. Can you hear me now? Now, yes. Yes. Very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, we have uh, a lot of experience now with, uh, with the batteries installed on board the ships. We have, uh, as NOLED, 22 uh, ships with batteries. Uh, and some of them are, are operating fully electric, uh, and some of them are operating in hybrid uh, mode. Uh, and we have also done a lot of conversions from uh, diesel uh, to electric uh, run bat uh, on, on batteries. Uh, we have uh, converted LNG vessels in the Oslo Fjord running on batteries at the moment. Uh, and our experience is that uh, we we have worked a lot with uh, with the average power consumption on board the ships. We have reduced all the auxiliary uh, use of energy uh, when it comes to HVAC system, when it comes to pumps, when it comes to heat, and and every part of the ships has been uh, has been optimized for low energy consumption and i think that is one of the most important things we have done and and all new buildings we have worked a lot on the on the hull lines to to make the ships uh, efficiency uh, as as efficient as possible uh, with with known uh, uh, hull lines, uh, and that's also very important. Uh, so, so I think what we have learned is that to to have a successful operation on batteries, you need to focus on low energy consumption. Uh, and of course, in Norway, we have the same problems as in every part of of, of the fjords uh, countries that we have a weak uh, weak grid uh, in especially where the ferries operates, and and that has been solved in some areas with batteries uh, stored uh, onshore for storing of energy, and and we are charging the ferries when they are in the terminals within seven to eight minutes. And of course, uh, the plug systems need to be working every time you, you enter the harbor. So that is also a challenge to, to have a good system to, to charge the ferries. Uh, and in general, uh, costly wise, it's, it's the, the price of, of running on electric are stupidly low compared to, to diesel. Uh, so, so that is also a positive side of it. I, I have to, uh, uh, to say here, and uh, for the benefit of our audience, that I visited the side of Norled and, and I watched a very nice video that you have there, along with many pictures and other videos of, of a totally electric ferry that you operate, the Ampere, 
and uh, the, the video is really impressive where the ferry is actually docking almost automatically uh, uh, in, in every, every uh, port it goes and then immediately there is a huge plug that drops and starts charging the battery. So I would suggest to the audience to visit uh, the side of Norled and, and look into the information is, is, really, uh, is really good. Um, uh, Mr. Moos, would you like to comment on, uh, uh, in general, about uh, lessons learned and pros and cons of electrification in Norway? Abs uh, absolutely. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this very uh, interesting event. My name is Narve Moos, and I'm the battery director in uh, DNV GL Maritime, but I'm also leader of the uh, green shipping program, GSP. <clears throat> So uh, from my perspective, I think the most important thing we have done in Norway is collaboration. Collaboration between the authorities and the industry and also a collaboration across uh, of the industry. And it has been in particular uh, important that uh, the government and the public sector has shown responsibility with respect to having uh, uh, green um, uh, requirements in, conjunc in conjunction with uh, uh, procurement uh, of uh, uh, ferry contracts. So uh, I'll tell, uh, therefore, I'll tell a bit about the green shipping program, if you permit, uh, um, which was established uh, six years ago. So it's a public private partnership program with a vision then to establish efficient environmental shipping. Uh, so today we have 59 private and 10 public participants from the entire value chain and it is financed partly by the industry and partly by uh, over the state budget. The program uh, has uh, started up 28 pilots, 28 demonstration projects with different green technologies and fuels and uh, which eight have already been uh, realized or under, are under construction and uh, among these several battery projects. So uh, we have also done several uh, ground breaking studies among others uh, carried out uh, the barrier study for the green uh, county municipal uh, uh, ferry tenders in 2015 which contributed to the ferry revolution in Norway, where we now have about 80 ferries on the water within a couple of years. And uh, um, um, we have also seen that this has been very important with respect to the market penetration of uh, battery ships worldwide, counting today on water or under construction 450 uh, battery ships altogether. Uh, and uh, 10 years ago, it was uh, yeah, 10 or something, 10 to 15, I think. And of these, 40% uh, uh, is in the Norwegian uh, market. So Norway has a 40% market share there. So the development in the ferry sector have been driven by environmental requirements in the public tenders for ferry operation from uh, first of all the Norwegian Public Road Administration but also from the county, county municipalities. However, many of the crossings of uh, the uh, of the crossings, the business case for batteries can be positive depending on the operational profile and that has of course been a, a very big advantage for batteries compared to other types of uh, fuels. So uh, I think the main learning is that you have to get the buyers of the, the transportation involved to have an efficient green shift. Uh, cargo owners or buyers of, uh, of ferry services. I think that uh, uh, is, uh, is a key uh, issue then. So I think that will, what I would say, in my introduction. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I, I think also it's impressive the, the private and public 
collaboration that you mentioned. You have uh, private companies and, and, and the public se sector collaborating, and, and this way you can produce real results. Um, uh, um, Mr. Morin, uh, would you like to comment, please? Okay. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much for invitation to this uh, to this session. Yeah. I will first. I want to tell that I have spent uh, more than thirty years in my career in electrification of different type of vessel, and uh, I can particularly remember that for twenty five years ago, uh, we delivered uh, a diesel electric solution uh, for a offshore vessel in the North Sea. Uh, with the result that these vessels reduced the fuel consumption with 35 uh, percent. But uh, most of the stakeholders in the market do not believe that that this was possible. Uh, and uh, therefore also we have uh, from, from our company side, uh, also in Norway, uh, mostly every second year or third year, we have delivered either the uh, first one or the first largest one to the maritime market. And um, particularly in Norway, uh, we, uh, we are uh, manufacturing the key elements to achieve a new game-changing solution for the maritime in industry, particular for uh, mid-size and, and, uh, and, and small vessel and uh, we have also been the pioneers in electrification of the um, uh, of the maritime industry not only in norway uh, up to today we have uh, yeah i think that is uh, next to 100 vessel in operation with batteries not only in norway we have uh, in operation tugs in southern australia to fishing vessel uh, north from the arctic circle in, in operation yeah uh, and uh, of course, uh, I think they do not think that that have okay. Some challenges has been, of, of course, uh, but uh, to create such type of solution, mean that we need to put you see, uh, the f um, known component components and products into a new entire solution uh, to to achieve you see, res results. And uh, particularly also when we have uh, large uh, large charging, we have in operation now uh, ferries uh, which are charging to the eight megawatt in eight minutes. And that means also that you see over 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 a control system on on board a ferry uh, need also to make sure that a short side grid has the stability which is required for the customers on on shore. So so that is not only to to, to put big components and battery on a vessel, but you need also the control uh, and automation system also to make sure that the land and sea can can hand in hand uh, operate you see excellent together. Thank you. V very good. I, I, I have a question. So Siemens is involved in all parts of the chain. In other words, in the infrastructure, in the equipment on board the ship. Uh, do you even make uh, manufacture the batteries or or or, or how exactly is, uh, is Siemens involved? Yeah, to tell it this way, that we uh, focused, uh, we started to focus on on using batteries uh, on vessels uh, in the middle of the nineties, yeah, and uh, particularly speed it up uh, in in the middle of the of two thousand and five, uh, and the first vessel which we delivered was of course uh, of uh, of um, uh, other makers, but uh, we of the, of the company made uh, very fast to see the. Uh, the decision that a key element on the batteries uh, as, as batteries uh, should you see, be a one one product of Siemens. So therefore, in Norway, we have developed and also manufacturing batteries for the entire global market. And that is the only uh, up to now is the only uh, um, uh, factory in this in a, in a global Siemens company which is uh, manufacturing battery to the global maritime industry. So and we also said okay, uh, in spite in spite of uh, we have also now an order also for electrical ferry in 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 Houston in US, <laughs> where they have enough oil of course yeah. So they are, they are also of course are thinking about you see, to 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 uh, to uh, to implement uh, this type of uh, technology to get the achievement which also Sigvald Brevik is is uh, is telling you yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Let me proceed to the second question, which is primarily uh, addressed to our Greek uh, speakers. Um, Greece has many islands 
and a large Zororo passenger fleet serving them. Thus, there must be immediate interest for electrification applications starting, of course, in the shorter routes. Describe some considerations requirements for such application. Do you think that strict regulations should be enacted to drive such electrification in Greece? Or do you think it can stand on its own competing with conventional fuels? Uh, considerations towards that and uh, uh, cost effectiveness remarks that you may have. I would like to start with Mr. Vergis on this question. So, Mr. Vergis, what do you think about the application of electrification in Greek waters? Good evening. Thank you for the nice invitation. Uh, we as a company, we have made um, a lot of investigation because we have a variety of vessels and uh, we are sailing through the islands, especially Saroni Gulf, which is a very interesting place for us. Um, having checked all the parameters for electrifying some of our vessels or develop or make new buildings, uh, which is of course very nice because we are talking about silent vessels, clean vessels, smooth sail vessels and a lot, with a lot of efficiency. Um, the only parameter, the adjusting parameter of uh, selecting to electrify one of the vessels sailing through the islands is the uh, operation profile of the vessels. For example, let's say that we have a vessel which is departing from Port of Piraeus uh, to reach destination uh, to reach destination B, which is Egina Island. This is something like 29 or 28, 29 nautical miles. Uh, this is one parameter. The second parameter is related how fast you want to go there and how you want to compete the competitors. Um, having checked all these things, um, we have come to the conclusion that yes, we can do uh, such attractive solution, provided that we be supported from the national grid. Means to construct while the vessel is arriving at Egina from a, from point A to point B uh, a charging station with the speed that we have calculated let's say 32 knots or something in order to be competent as I said uh, or even slower we need a very high charging station because we need a power of uh, approximately uh, 5000 horsepower for a vessel carrying 300 passenger or something catamaran vessel for example uh, so uh, national grid or other energy providers which we have made several discussions they have to provide the stability of installation in order to supply and charging uh, the vessel which we will electrify um, I see a future I see a great future on that because I have seen the tendency of uh, OLP, which is the uh, organization of port trans uh, Piraeus transportation, uh, let's say somehow owned by the Chinese now, I have seen the potential that they want to expand, uh, first of all, the cold, I cold ironing, they want to expand the network, and the several providers, including the national uh, grid providers, they want to proceed with that such kind of uh, uh, investment, and they, are, they have started to make some investigations with the local authorities of several islands. And we are always, we are talking about a certain capacity, certain speed, the certain dimension of the vessel. If we change to vessels like uh, Ropax vessel, which is carrying 1,500 or 2,000 passengers and comfort hundreds of cars, uh, then the propulsion there is much, much higher and uh, with the existing technology of batteries, make it impossible uh, to have fully electrical vessel. Because to give you another example, one of our uh, recent new buildings, uh, built in uh, 2012, and this is Blue Star Patmos, um, making during uh, a day until to return in the port, uh, six or eight ports, beginning from Piraeus, ending somewhere in uh, 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 Naxos and returning. Such kind of power for the moment uh, 
it's not possible to have it, but it's very much interest for vessels, for all the small islands, because Greece, it's like, let's say, Norway, has a lot of islands, like in the fjords that you have. And as I mentioned, to close my uh, discussion, I see a great future, provided, as I mentioned, that according to uh, IMO new regulations about the zero emission, zero emission you achieve only if you uh, provide the energy of your uh, aggregate, let's say batteries or whatever else, via uh, renewable energy sources. And as uh, the ambassador mentioned, we are a country that we begin and we have to develop uh, a large scale of renewable energy sources Imagine solar panels having so much sun in this country. So this is what I have to say. I, I, so, I said, so, yeah. so two, two important things from what you said is for uh, the near term, for the small uh, ships and for the short routes, the problem is infrastructure in Greece. That has to, in other words, charging stations of big capacity, e even for those small ships. So on that front, uh, I, I think uh, uh, there is the European funds that that are going to be coming in that are going to help, uh, and of course we have uh, the uh, uh, technology and the know-how of, of uh, companies like Siemens. <laughs> I'm sure who would be willing to help with the stabilization that you mentioned and all that. For the longer range and the bigger ships. Yes, we, we are we uh, over there is is we have a problem and the problem is the energy capacity of the batteries that we have right now, um, their limit is low and 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 for the for for our audience to understand the the problem, uh, why batteries cannot be used right now for big ships and fast ships, is that one ton of diesel has has an energy capacity of 11,700 watt hours per kilogram of diesel. So every kilogram of diesel you burn, you get 11,700 watt hours. The best lithium batteries that we have right now, and maybe our Norwegian guests can correct me, uh, they have a capacity of only 300 watt hours per kilogram of battery. So so we can see that it is extremely difficult to compete right now. In other words, the battery technology will have to improve tremendously in order to be able to talk about propulsion by battery uh, uh, going uh, uh, over over the Atlantic, for example, or something like that. But that's, that's something for the future. Um, uh, so we should start with the first steps and you also mentioned that if you want to compete with the other guys who are who are going 32 uh, knots speed, uh, your electric ship should also do 32 knots speed. I'm not so sure this is so because it, it could go half speed, but now more and more people understand the importance of 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 clean energy. Okay, so so I, I would think that customers would pr uh, 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 would prefer to go with a clean method to Egina rather than uh, uh, a conventional ship. So so but, but that, that that's that's something to be uh, to be found out by by public I guess uh, uh, research. Uh, yes, Mr. Vergis. Yeah. Yes, have you what done you any research? Truth. And I'm, I'm happy to hear uh, that the understanding is for everyone that clean energy and caring about the environment is, let's say, our first priority. Uh, on the other side, commercial speaking, um, people which they are going for a vacation during the summer, which is the hot period, they want to reach their destination. Uh, we know from the experience as soon as possible. This is why some catamaran vessels that we have with a higher speed, with a higher consumption, uh, this is why we have higher price on the ticket, and we see that there's a preference. The significant difference on power is, let's say, to reduce the speed from 32 to go 16 or 17 knots. If you go from 32 to 28, will not be that big difference in the energy that you are demanding and you want to have. Okay, Mr. Burbulis asked for the floor. Yes, sir. 
Thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation. Thank you, Naftika Khonika Nisalos, for uh, inviting me to this very interesting discussion. Uh, I would like to talk more as a, a passenger, uh, not so much my professional uh, involvement, because, as you mentioned, I work for Euronav, which is a company that operates uh, big tankers, uh, VLCC, Suez Max tankers, uh, much uh, bigger uh, installed power than uh, what uh, our, our uh, guests from uh, uh, Norway mentioned before. I recall uh, the maximum uh, installed uh, power was mentioned to be 8 megawatt, uh, whereas uh, in a, a very large good oil carrier, the installed power is uh, three times that much. Uh, uh, and uh, Working for Euronav, who is a company that is really uh, appreciating the need to work for reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, I feel that we all have to look to the future and try to change our, uh, in some cases, established mindsets. As it has happened in the international shipping and of course, also in the tankers operation to reduce the average speed of the ships uh, because it's a very direct and immediate uh, method to uh, reduce the emissions, the greenhouse gas emissions. I, I feel as a passenger that I should also be incentivized, as you said, uh, Mr. Zachariadis, to choose for a greener option, even if uh, by choosing that option, I may uh, arrive to my destination uh, a bit later. And I have to say, because I'm uh, already uh, quite some time uh, on Earth, uh, that I, rem I remember in my youth, the passenger ships connecting uh, the islands were less than half of the speed that uh, now we are talking about. Of course, uh, the, our life uh, style has changed. All, the, all these things uh, have uh, been part in, of our life, the speed, definitely, but maybe this is time to rethink. Yes. Uh, Mr. Heliotis, would you like to... Uh to give us your comments. Yes, Panos, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. It's very, very interesting uh, discussion so far. I, I would like to just uh, comment regarding that we are talking about now passenger ships. Of course, the, the, the uh, story is uh, completely different when you were talking about ocean going large vessels uh, that Stamatis uh, was talking about and we are operating. Uh, regarding what it was just been said is that the speed is something that has not been regulated yet uh, in the uh, passenger uh, sector and is left to the market to decide what kind of speeds you uh, you travel around the islands but i would like to touch a technical note here regarding the uh, ability of the uh, present batteries uh, the lithium uh, based batteries uh, to to reach the uh, stage where we can depend on the uh, on this power and for this i want to stress two strategic uh, points here one is the reliability of the system and the other one is the dependability of the system this, uh, these two things are the foundation of uh, the large vessel's ability to uh, undergo large oceanic uh, uh, voyages uh, where everything can happen to you in the middle of the Atlantic or the Pacific and you can take the actions to save, uh, first of all, the, 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 the safety of life and then the, uh, and then the cargo in the, in the ship. Uh, what I want to say with that is that we need to identify uh, the safety aspect uh, behind the battery question. And for this, I would also like to hear from the classification society we have with us today, and as well as the, the operators and the, uh, and the makers. Um, 
Of course, we had uh, a slight uh, mishap with uh, we, we already with a vessel regarding a, a thermal runaway and almost an explosion. Uh, we know that, uh, and this kind of safety issue. Uh, when we're talking about passengers and uh, and uh, cars in the first place, and then a vessel traveling, uh, voyaging across the Pacific or the Atlantic, uh, we need to have this under consideration. So to, 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 to take this discussion further, I would like to place this question. Is the classification uh, and the uh, type approval uh, sector ready? Uh, is the, are the makers ready to undertake a, uh, a further step in the lithium battery in order to achieve this reliability and dependability so we can apply these systems safely, both for passenger ships as well as commercial ships? Direct question for Mr. Moores, I think. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, it's a very good uh, question. Um, but uh, from our side, uh, we have uh, a considerable uh, number of battery uh, powered ships now uh, in our class. And uh, all the time, we have uh, developed uh, developed the class rules, and uh, we have even uh, conducted very big uh, research programs uh, we, jointly with the industry and the authorities, the Norwegian Maritime Authorities, uh, uh, just to uh, let's say invest further uh, areas where we not uh, are completely satisfied. Uh, with uh, the battery rules as of today. But if you, I think green fuel is really dangerous. And uh, I think <laughs> among the different uh, zero emission fuels, uh, I think uh, battery is the safest one at the present time. Uh, for instance, uh, for longer distances, uh, uh, we are now uh, piloting uh, hydrogen powered ships ammonia powered ships uh, um, and even uh, uh, ships uh, that are uh, used on uh, type of hydrogen oil etc as a fuel uh, so um, there is no uh, there is no silver bullet and uh, it will be very expensive also safety has to be handled with care but uh, also for conventional ships, we have accidents as well. And uh, the energy density you have in traditional MGO is uh, tremendous, but we have learned to handle it. And in the same way, we have to take safety very serious and uh, um, do our best and take it step by step. Yeah, I think that's what I would uh, answer to, to that one. Okay, w one second. When, when we have interesting conversation, time passes fast. So I want to get into um, s some, some other areas. Um, when we're talking about large ships crossing the Pacific or the Atlantic, that's, that's uh, way, way into the future. Uh, we need new, different battery technology for that to be used as propulsion. But in the meantime, we can use batteries uh, uh, on those ships uh, as, as auxiliary power, for example, or perhaps to replace one generator engine. So on, on that front, I would, like, I would like to ask our Norwegian speakers on their experience, how can that, how can Mr. Heliotis tanker, for example, utilize batteries to save some money and make his ship greener. Mr. Moen. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think that's a very important question. Yeah, And uh, first of all, I want to say that batteries will, of course, play an important role in the maritime industry in the future. I personally believe that 80% uh, of the vessel which will be ordered in 2025 will, that, will, will either have a smaller battery or a larger battery. 
That is depending on the type of the vessel. And, uh, and I think also that, of course, that batteries for a deep sea vessel are challenging. Uh, for instance, a deep sea container vessel, or the largest one on, in, uh, is sailing today, if these vessels should be equipped with batteries, the volume of batteries is equi equivalent to 15 times of the entire bunker space and the machinery space. So that means okay, that's imp impossible. So therefore, it's right that you say start with uh, the ship types where the technology is available. If you are doing that, for instance, ferries and tugs and so on, then of course the maritime industry will of course drive you see, research, research and development further. Will be increase you see, uh, increase the competition, which also will of course uh, create new you see, game changing uh, technologies as well. Uh, and first of all, we have no quick fix to achieve zero emission in one single step. And uh, therefore, we have to to start start somewhere, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, I think that uh, most of us uh, know know is convinced about uh, to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases with fifty percent uh, in the next years to come. Uh, we cannot, or you cannot, because you order a vessel tomorrow with the technology of yesterday. You have to think you see, a bit different, and therefore coming also to to my to my to my to my next point or to my answer here, the, to to reach uh, the reduction of greenhouse gases with fifty percent or twenty percent or whatever, you need some you see, smart electrical system on the board of vessel, batteries or whatever, speed drives for propellers or shaft turners or whatever. So that was all the same we did did also with in two thousand twelve, when we. Uh, when we uh, made a rebuild of four large railways ferries, which was operating between Germany and Denmark. That means that this, this uh, vessel had five diesel engines with generators. We put one diesel engine and generator on, on shore with a weight of 90 ton, put on board 30 tons of batteries, one, one ton of electrical equipment, and the result was that the vessel reduced the fuel consumption with 15% 15, 15 without charging for shore. And I think that we need also to do this step by step. And uh, last year, uh, the world's largest uh, also hybrid vessel went into operation. That was a Ropax vessel in Norway operating between you see, the southern part of Norway and Sweden, the so-called color, color hybrid. This vessel is a plug-in vessel that uh, that the charging batteries in in uh, in in Norway and steaming to to Sweden, and the vessel has a capacity of two thousand passengers, uh, five hundred cars, and and trucks and so on. And due to the plug-in technology, uh, the vessel has reduced the emission of greenhouse gases with twenty percent. Uh, if it has been also a charging possibility in Sweden, then the vessel with, uh, with further have had reduced the emission of greenhouse gases with, with 40, uh, 20%, mean 40%. So I think that my message is that we need to go to say, smoothly step by step because we do not have any quick fix for the, for, for the entire vessel types, but for ferries and tugs and other smaller vessels where you can charge very often, then the technology is proven and is also available. Mr. Morin, that last vessel that you mentioned, um, is it using the electricity uh, for auxiliary uh, uh, electricity uh, or auxiliary no. power or also for propulsion? No, so the, the batteries are connected to the main switchboard of the vessel so that the electrical energy on the main switchboard is, of course, distributed to, 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 to also the propulsion and also for the accommodation as well, yeah. Mr. Moos? I have a small comment there. Uh, the motivation, uh, once more, it's really the public, public sector that is going in front here. So the reason why it came this solution came up was really by the city of Sandefjord that would like to have emission free port sailing uh, in their port so today it's possible then for half an hour to sail with the propulsion and everything with a pure electric and pure power so 
once more, it's the public side that sets the rules. And um, today, the ship owner is very satisfied and the, all the vendors and the city is very uh, satisfied and the prime minister uh, do the baptizing of, uh, of the, the, the ferry, etc. So uh, it's very uh, correct what uh, Odd is saying, taking it step by step, and, and we will hear. I want to ask something, Mr. Breivik, but before I do that, Mr. Vergis wanted to make a comment. Mr. Vergis? Yeah, the comment, yes. uh, some of the things was covered with the Mios, but what I want to mention to the other two gentlemen, Mr. Heliotis and Mr. Bubulis, regarding the... Um, Ocean going vessels, uh, definitely the hybrid application is a good application, but we have batteries and electrification of the vessel. The main thing is the batteries, but we have also to think the developments that are taking place in for the solar panels. In our days, one square meter can give even 300 watts, means there is a lot of open surfaces on the long ocean going vessels that installation of solar panels can charge a considerably big amount of batteries because whatever energy you receive you are subtracting this from emissions and this is something that also has to be considered and the application of hybrid as mentioned is also good but combine these two it's ideal for the long going ocean vessels this is what i wanted to say Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Let me, I want to ask something, Mr. Breivik, because he's one of the pioneers of, of, of all this. Uh, what unexpected issues uh, uh, did you have? What, once, once you decided that we're going we're gonna to try uh, to go all electric and all that, I'm sure you had some surprises that, that, that you had to overcome. Can you, can you give us uh, uh, so, some, some feedback? Yes, yes, I can, and and of course we have uh, we have learned uh, a lot, and we have have learned the hard way. We have had uh, a um, uh, battery fire on board one of the ships, and we have had uh, one explosion in the battery rooms uh, as well. So so we have really learned it uh, the hard way, and and the first battery. Um, uh, version we introduced on this uh, MF Ampere. Uh, was uh, on another generation than we are operating now with more uh, and better control systems. The, I think the most important thing when you talk about the battery technology is that you have uh, good integrators uh, that know how to integrate the power system into the ship system. Uh, th that is very important and also we have learned that there are more electrical losses or heat losses in all the components that uh, that was assumed before we started uh, introducing the batteries so so we see uh, a heat loss of up till 10 percent from from the the grid to the propeller in the systems uh, we uh, we we didn't expect that high uh, so so cooling of batteries uh, is very important and, and the, the temperature control on the systems is, is very, very important. Uh, and, and also we, we have also dimensioned the batteries uh, higher now in order to, to have uh, healthy batteries in a 10 years pers perspective. So, so, so we have I've learned a lot. Uh, oh. Technical question: How is the cooling achieved, Mr. Breivik? Yeah, we we are cooling by air coolers uh, and heat pumps. So so we are generating. We have cold water in Norway, so so we have enough uh, cooling from the sea. So so that is used. Okay, my next question is is for Mr. Bulbulis and Mr. Heliotis. Um, would you be agreeable to fit your ocean going ships with a battery system to support only hotel and navigational loads for example um, and potentially such system could also support operation ab at birth okay by concurrent charging it especially during the night uh, 
uh, and I'm not talking, I, I'm talking uh, from the perspective to reduce your emissions, not, not necessarily if it makes financial sense. Um, so would you be willing to consider something like that, Mr. Bourboulis? Uh, Euronav has committed to follow the Poseidon principles trajectory for reducing emissions of the ship. So it is already uh, a commitment to, uh, to follow. So if there are solutions that would uh, contribute to that uh, target, uh, we would definitely consider. But uh, of course, you know that for, every, for any company, uh, the question of uh, cost is uh, always there, uh, can be absorbed uh, depending on the level of the cost. But um, for me, the main uh, point for consideration is uh, how exactly, uh, as uh, Mr. Vergis mentioned before, uh, the battery in my mind is uh, an, en an energy storage system. So you get an energy, the quality of the energy, that you charge with. So uh, it is important to have uh, a clean energy to store into the battery in order to reduce the emissions. I have seen some proposals, some considerations, as you mentioned before, to use a battery in order to uh, run your diesel generators at a steady load and then uh, the battery to absorb the variations and uh, the response to variating loads, but I think this is a marginal save. A considerable save to my, a saving to my mind would be if there would be a possibility to charge the battery by renewable uh, source of energy. Uh, to my understanding, for the size of the ships that we operate now, it is not, uh, it is not uh, feasible. Uh, definitely, we would look if we would make a considerable uh, contribution to the reduction of greenhouse gas. But the way that I see it now, maybe I miss something. It's not uh, very evident. Uh, especially, you mentioned when the ship is at port. When a tanker is at port or at the terminal, uh, it's a very heavy operation. Uh, as, uh, as you know, demanding in, uh, in electrical power, especially if, this, if it is for discharging, maybe uh, 2,000 uh, uh, kilowatts. So uh, it, is, uh, it is something that we would definitely look. At the moment, I cannot see it very clearly how this could uh, be achieved. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll modify slightly the question for Mr. Heliotis, but, but as far as being in port, a tanker discharging, what I had in mind is that all this energy, maybe you can call it cold ironing, but all this energy could come uh, from shore instead of firing up the boilers to produce steam to, uh, to run your turbines uh, to discharge. Uh, so... Uh, but, but Mr. Heliotis, slight modification. Uh, most Greek companies are private. Co ah, uh, Mr. Bourboulis, you wanted to add something? No, but cold iron in gas is welcome. And in that sense, a battery could, uh, could assist. Uh, it could also assist if you would uh, have it for charging, uh, because in 2030, it's supposed that the ships at port in EU should not emit uh, at all uh, greenhouse gases, uh, it could also be uh, such a possibility to, to keep the battery charged during the voyage. And when you come at port, uh, you use the battery uh, charged the electricity. But again, it's going to be uh, electricity produced by the diesel generators. But still, the size of the batteries, I feel, for this uh, ship is going to be huge. That's, uh, that was my comment. So, Mr. Heliotis. Greek companies are, most Greek companies are private companies. So any investment you make on that front is from private money uh, of, of uh, the ship owner. Do you think that this investment can be recouped uh, 
in the form of a strong benefit in the chartering potential of the ship in the near future, considering the new greenhouse gas regulations I'm talking about. Do you think that the charters would prefer so much a ship with such an investment as to make financial sense to proceed to make the investment? Well, Panos, I, first of all, I would agree fully with Stamatis about the uh, what he said uh, regarding the uh, the use uh, uh, dedicated to hoteling or the uh, lighting or navigation, etc. The the thing about the the investment for installing this um, this arrangement with batteries um, as a benefit for reducing the uh, the emissions should be seen as what kind of measure would be. Uh, we are talking about the short-term measure and the, uh, the long-term measure. If, if someone, for instance, would be ordering a ship tomorrow morning or someone would be considering ordering a ship after 2025, for instance. Uh, so that, that, that's, a big, uh, that's, a, that's a big question and uh, everybody keep asking the same question. Uh, uh, this morning we had a, a very interesting uh, webinar with uh, Hyundai uh, Heavy Industries where they also try to uh, answer uh, to the big question, what we order now? Uh, do we order... Uh, um, uh, conventional ship, LNG, uh, uh, with uh, flat rotors, a spaceship, uh, what kind of thing we order now. Uh, the question is not, is not clear at all, I'm afraid. Uh, everybody has to assess their own uh, investment strategies. They have to see how much uh, uh, money is in, is in, in, in their pockets and uh, act accordingly. What I wanted to say regarding the uh, the actual uh, condition of the import uh, use uh, of these uh, batteries, uh, the cold ironing is something that uh, already is uh, very uh, popular and will be applied uh, soon uh, uh, with 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 a lot of force. Uh, we have been involved with uh, the Intertanko uh, Technical and Environmental Committee with uh, the the, uh, the use of uh, this at uh, the CARB regulations in uh, Los Angeles and Los Long Beach and North California ports where uh, the regulation is coming forward by two years and by 2025 and 2027 uh, you need to have uh, some kind of arrangement, either cold ironing or, or, or some treatment in order to, to be discharging or do operations as a tanker in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, the, the, the West Coast. So if that can be combined with uh, an array of batteries that can supply you uh, first of all, the charging ability and the uh, uh, the, the operation of uh, using these batteries for sup supplementary use during these uh, discharging operations and the calls during the uh, the West Coast um, uh, visits to the United States or even Europe later on. Maybe this is maybe this could be done but somebody has to identify what exactly these batteries will do one idea maybe will be to be a, a, an emergency supply uh, system uh, whereby if the uh, shore power is disconnected for some reason uh, maybe uh, uh, the, uh, the batteries would take would, could take over at least the safety systems and the shutdown mechanism and the shutdown procedures so all the operation is uh, is safe so this is how i see this uh, this operation going on in the, in the for, for the bigger ships like tankers for instance okay i i i have a question for mr moore and and, and, and perhaps mr moore's and it has to do with the future battery technology what do you see uh, as far as improvements in battery technology? Should we expect any any big breakthroughs anytime soon, or uh, can you tell? Can you not tell? What do you see? You are the experts in this, uh, Mr. Moen. So I'm I'm not an expert in the chemistry, but uh, first of all, of course. Uh, uh, that is a lot of, of pressure around uh, the world to 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 develop because the new battery technology will which are safer with a longer lifetime and also can be charged and discharged off now whatever but i believe that will take some years until a new chemistry 
is, is coming to the market. Yeah? First, it has to be developed in the kitchen, <laughs> and then, then also to have to also to, to commercialize it. That, that will take time. I think that in the next five years, we, we need to deal with the today technology. And therefore, I think also very important, because I think also that uh, then the industry will, first of all, calls optimize the existing technology uh, to make it safer and to make it more reliable and also to make it more compact yeah and also of course uh, i think also we will see also an increase a decrease in price as well there yeah? until a new chemistry is available yeah? now we, we haven't talked at all about fuel cells do you uh, see fuel cells related uh, uh, as assisting uh, um, uh, an arrangement with batteries or do you see it as being something different? Yeah. Mr. Breivik. Yeah. Uh, yes, we, we are at the moment uh, constructing one, uh, one ferry that will operate on uh, hydrogen, uh, on uh, liquefied hydrogen in, uh, in Norway from the next uh, year. And, and we see that uh, a combination of uh, fuel cells and battery is a very sufficient uh, way of operating the ferries. And also in the future where we have these electric, uh, pure electric ferries, we can combine that with uh, hydrogen in order to avoid uh, charging uh, between uh, all the trips we are taking so that we can operate more dynamically in, in, in rush hours and such. So, so we, we think that fuel cells uh, have a good position uh, in combination with, uh, with batteries. Okay, for the benefit of our viewers, we have to explain a few terms perhaps, because not everybody is familiar. Cold ironing is when you take electricity from shore, but, and you use it in your ship to do the operation of the ship. And what we're talking here before is using that electricity called ironing to also charge batteries, which is a different thing, uh, to also charge batteries. And fuel cells is um, uh, where, where you have a substance such as hydrogen, LNG, ammonia, or whatever, and the chemical reaction of that sub substance in the fuel cell produces electricity. And with that electricity, the fuel cell produces electricity. Without electricity, you can charge batteries or, or you can use it uh, for whatever else uh, you would like. You could even use it directly for propulsion. Um, Mr. Burbulis, yes. Uh, just on what you said that we, I just want to say that we uh, uh, are part of a research study. We offer the operational uh, feedback to the study for uh, checking uh, the possibility and the feasibility of using a fuel cell uh, for a VLCC to power to produce electrical power. And in that case, definitely the, the batteries need to be accompanying uh, the fuel cells in, in such uh, arrangement. And also uh, because it's going to be a heat uh, production uh, through this uh, reaction that you mentioned, uh, it's also a potential for uh, some steam generation out of all this uh, system. And then the steam generated will be used uh, also for electrical power production. Okay, we only have six minutes uh, left. Therefore, that means uh, with, with six speakers, one minute each for your closing remark, perhaps. Uh, I'll start with Mr. Vergis. Regarding the fuel cells, I will be very quick. The guest scale that up to now is made is uh, uh, 200, 250 kilowatts. Means if you need a larger scale, you have to cascade. Means at the end, you have a lot of weight and a lot of uh, fuel cells um, joined together. This is one thing. The second thing is the supply chain of nitrogen. Uh, and the last thing that I want to say that all of us, we have to consider uh definitely from the environment definitely the electrical ships is the if not the absolute today but is tomorrow in the future and i strongly believe that uh when one or the other way uh the electrification of the vessel will be the future thank you very much 
Οκ, okay, είμαι στο χελιό της. So we can hear you. For some reason, we cannot Sorry. hear you. Sorry, no. yes. Uh, my, my comment will be a general one, not only for the batteries, but all the, uh, for all the remaining uh, potential fuels that uh, we have uh, to consider. The, our industry has been evolving for, another, for, for at least uh, 80 to, uh, to 100 years, where, and we reached this stage now where we have efficient engines, safe uh, operations, uh, etc. And uh, I agree with the, our Norwegian friends who said that we have to be very cautious and uh, step by step uh, uh, I, I try to develop uh, all these things so this is not going to be a, a Sunday to Monday morning job it's going to be a long uh, uh, process uh, which will require a lot of trial and error as our uh, as all naval architects and marine engineers know and uh, it will take uh, quite a lot of effort from all the uh, uh, parts of the industry, not only the technical part, but the commercial part and, and the supply and, and demand part as well. Thank you very much, uh, Panos, for this interesting uh, discussion. Thank you, Dimitri. Uh, Mr. Borboulis. Yes, I would like to say that maybe five years ago, if somebody would say that we would discuss this type of things, uh, would uh, tell that uh, he is crazy, but now uh, all these matters are into the discussion. We see the ships and the propulsion of the ships uh, with a very different perspective, so we must be open. Uh, things that were unthinkable, unthinkable are now on the table for uh, as a potential uh, pathway to decarbonization. So in that respect, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be part in this discussion. We are open to focus on all the alternative uh, solutions that should be uh, available. And uh, if uh, batteries and electrification would be part of it for bigger ships, uh, so much the better, I would say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Breivik, any closing remark? Yes, uh, thank you. I, I, I also <laughs> understand uh, uh, Verga's uh, concern about uh, the fast-going uh, catamarans. That's, uh, that's one of the problems we have in Norway as well. And, and we have started looking into how to make them uh, zero emission as well as the ferries. And I think what's very important for all to understand is that uh, in Norway, we have achieved a low energy consumption ferry operation through this battery program. We have reduced the energy consumption dramatically in order to, to be ready for the batteries. That's, that's the rule number one for us. And I also think that for achieving zero emission on the catamarans, on the express boats, we also need to to take the, the, the ship apart and start all over again and see how we can, can both operate and build the, the ships to be zero emission. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Morse? Yes, um, uh, in Norway, I think for the time being, electrification is not necessarily batteries, but uh, electrification with uh, fuel cells, as mentioned here, and uh, other types of uh, fuels for longer distances. Then. And the innovation drivers uh, for this electrification is, of course, climate change and the Paris Agreement. And uh, there are uh, even some uh, ship investors and banks ask the question, is the environment uh, sufficient? Uh, maybe the Paris Agreement will require additional uh, um, restrictions or requirements to the industry, uh, a CO2 price, uh, additional uh, uh, regulations, uh, etc. And I think uh, we expect both to, to come and are currently positioning ourselves. And we are moving along a lot of axes at the same time. So, um, and I think uh, the, the, there is uh, different solutions uh, uh, for for different type of, of ships. Uh, uh, but uh, as we see it, 
to make the markets to work for use of green technologies and fuels. That's the most important thing that the government can contribute to. And uh, that would be my uh, main recommendation. Thank you very much, Mr. Moos. And last but not least, Mr. Moen. Your closing comment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to mention also that, uh, for instance, uh, for six years ago, we, we have uh, retrofitted uh, six large Ropax vessels operating between uh, Germany and Denmark. Uh, first of all, they reduced the emission of greenhouse gas with 50%. But on the other hand, they, they, they reduced the maintenance costs with 40% due to cutting running hours on this engine and also when the uh, diesel engine was operated they were operated on the on the optimized combustion so then i will say that uh, the future will be electric either ele direct electric powered or that electricity is is uh, is you can see, producing uh, e-fuels a synthetic fuel ammonia or hydrogen or whatever and I also strongly believe that in in the next in, in at least and uh, latest in five years every new vessels uh, which will be constructed will have a small or a larger battery and then I think also that if the future should be electric, it will also be a some shortage of electricity on shore also to infrastructure and infrastructure cost. So that means that the shore and sea need to be very smart connected also when a vessel is in harbor a vessel as well and and then it mean also that if a vessel need uh, that can happen that one vessel for instance in the morning can only get 100 kilowatt from shore but uh, but uh, two, uh, two hours later the vessel can get 500 vessels so therefore i think also that you need to see smart technology at, at the vessel and also the share on, on the shore to utilize uh, to see, uh, to see the, the cross uh, sector uh, topology thank you very much yeah it was very interesting thank you thank you all speakers uh, our time is up uh, for a very interesting discussion indeed and uh, i would like to thank uh, the sponsor of this webinar erma first uh, and uh, our viewers for being with us uh, have a good evening and we'll see you next time at the next webinar of isalos.net have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye.